Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video. This time after popular demand I thought it only fair that we take a look at trains and more importantly rail design in satisfactory. Now we've already covered train logistics in depth in previous videos, I'll place the most recent one in the cards above. This guide however will focus primarily on railway design in terms of practicality whilst also touching on the basics of setting up railways for those of you who don't know what they're doing. Now if you do find this video helpful and deserving of a like then do hit the thumbs up and I should mention if you already know the basics of using trains do skip the first few minutes I'll put timestamps in the video for ease. So first off trains are unlocked in hub tier 6 and require both computers and heavy modular frames to set up along with some lower tier items. They also consume power to run which varies between 25 and 110 megawatts. This is per train and is dependent on the incline of the track and also the size of your train. The perk of using trains is that power is transported over the rails and yes that does mean that you can use the hover pack above rails and trains also have a higher possible throughput compared to conveyors although conveyors are the bottleneck in game. They are also arguably easier and cheaper to set up and upgrade over miles of conveyors which can take a lot more time and a lot more resources. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's much easier to add one more train to a line rather than place another 100 conveyors. Now in future updates we are expecting signalling and we will be covering how to use signals when the update arrives, however until then you should at least bear in mind that collision will come to trains eventually, so it will be beneficial to set up railway lines heading in two separate directions like you would drive on a road. Or the other option would be to have passing lines. A train line that runs only in one direction along a circuit or you could go with a single push-pull train on a single line but don't worry we'll be covering these setups and these concepts as soon as we can build a simple setup. The first train setup will be a circuit in a circle. First we will place a train station and freight station next to one another then run the train line from the station around to another station with a train and freight station attached. Then we will run the line back around to the back end of the other station which will then be powered and can run a train from one station to the next and back round. In order to do this automatically, check or change the name of the stations, then go into the train or station and set up a timetable. Configure the timetable so that the train goes from one station to the other station and if you wish you can actually place a second train on the line as well and you can see them both running here. Now the trains can only travel to stations that are directly pathable to by a single railway line. So next let's talk about passing lines. Now these can be used on a single section of line for two-way train travel when signals arrive but until then your trains will pass through one another. Also before we move on a note on freight stations, in order for a train to pick up items the freight station will need to be designated as a loading or unloading station. You can do this in the menu of the freight station. Now if you have a single line you can create a push-pull system between two stations. Make sure that each station is facing outward of one another and also make sure that you have a train with two locomotives facing the opposite direction as trains can only travel automatically in the direction that they're facing. If you want a single train to run along a push-pull setup you will need to add loops after the station. This allows the train to pass back through along the line. A better system than this though would be to run two separate lines, each line heading in the opposite direction. This will help reduce work when adding signals later, well at least with a bit of luck when signalling comes to the game, it depends how they implement it. Here my trains always head forwards along the left hand side of the track and I know a lot of you uh, will no doubt prefer the right side, that's your prerogative, but regardless 
This allows us to add more complex designs to our trains without mucking up the system, such as using T-junctions and roundabouts, which we'll cover in a second. But first we need to cover rail placement. Rails are notoriously finicky in Satisfactory, and can take a bit of work, but a good rule of thumb is that you can make a 90 degree turn by placing a rail along the outer foundation of a 3x3 grid. Um, it's actually really good to note that there's like a magic, like 3 is a magic number for Satisfactory when it comes to rails, we'll be using that later. If you can't place a single 90 degree turn in one sitting though, uh, do not worry, you can do a 40 to 45 degree turns, um, but like I said, it can be finicky. Now rails can also go on the wonk when placing them freehand, so to avoid this, always place a bracer track before and after uh, the patch that you're placing. This will straighten the line out. Also I should mention, when you are doing corners, you will need to place a bracer track first so that you can make it curve. A quick note on incline and declines, trains are best placed on a double or single ramped foundation. It's possible to do a deeper incline by placing a double followed by a deep ramp and repeating, but this makes a wavy look which isn't aesthetically pleasing for me. You can also get rises in rails just before or after ramps. Now if you dislike this clipping, play around with ending the ramp a few spaces before the top or bottom edge and you should be able to get a smoother transition. Okay guys, time for more complex designs. First off, let's look at the T-junction. For this we will actually be placing two Ys and we will want to make sure our circuits follow the same one-way system that we built. Again, we are using parallel tracks here, uh, one going in one direction, the other in the opposite. This is just to make it easier later on. If you're just doing a single track, then you can do, um, just you won't need to do to double this up. So when it comes to creating junctions, like I mentioned before, three is still the magic number. For a single T-junction, you'll want to place the main line first, and where you want the junction, we will place a fa three foundation long rail down from the center out into one direction. And then we will do the same in the other direction. So we have a six long uh, rail. We will then repeat this on the parallel line, just next door to it. And at this point, you will want to place the bottom of the T junction. Now again, three foundation spaces from the opposite side of the track place another two railway lines running down the route you want the junction to go. You should now have the main line and the junctions which are bracing lines placed. Next we will connect each of the main lines to each of the junction lines so that they follow the one way system. You should be able to connect the lines directly from the main line to the junction, but if not, break the curves into half turn turns. This should make it easy to complete a T-junction. Now once done, you should have a setup like this. If you want to, you can place two T-junctions together. We follow the same process as the T-junction, but I recommend adding another two or three foundation long strips of rail down, ex extending the rail outwards. You'll need the extra space, so in this example, I use a three length of rail followed by a two length of rail and then a further three foundation length of rail. This is because the max splits on a rail junction can be two. So we need to create a stagger for the junction. Once done, connect each junction line with the two main lines to create this shape. This allows trains to enter the main line in either direction, but does not allow us to cross straight over. You can do this, however, with either a bridge or alternatively, you can create a cross section like this. To build this, we will need more space and we will start by placing four crossing main lines, starting with running one pair of lines across six foundations, and then do the same with the other pair, six foundations across. So there's a cross in the middle, as you can see here. Next, on the end of each line, place two two foundation lengths of railway track. This will allow you to create a staggered junction. Connect the outer rail junctions first, then the inner railway junctions. And 
This also brings me to another point, and currently we cannot manually change our train's lane. Therefore, if you're just traveling along a circuit with multiple junctions, make sure the train is traveling automatically to your destination rather than you controlling it, otherwise you will need to manually switch each switch. Roundabouts are also a great idea, but a little bit difficult to set up. The idea is that all trains will follow one direction around a roundabout, but I recommend building the roundabout larger rather than smaller as future signalling might not work well if the whole train cannot fit on a roundabout. To build a roundabout for trains, we will first place a straight line this should be placed where you want the roundabout to go and is used as a bracing track as we can't place curves without placing the straight track first. At this point, using the magic three by three, we will create the 90 degree corners and we will place these in a circle. Then you will need to delete each section individually and redo it into shorter 45 degree turns. Placing the circle first makes it easier to judge the angle so that we can get those 45 degree turns in. Now we will want to place the lines leading into the roundabout and I've placed these three foundations away from the curve and then I've connected them with the roundabout. Do this for all the junctions and it will be complete. The last thing that I want to touch on are train spirals for climbing and descending heights. This is a simple technique that will make it relatively compact um, for taking trains up and down great heights. So to do this, place a larger foundation in the center of where your corkscrew will be. Then taking the magic rule of three, place a small one meter ramp, three foundations from the center. Next run the rail halfway up the small ramp. Next, we will place another three foundations from the top or the middle foundation, sorry, of the middle foundation on the next side of the middle foundation. Then add a small ramp and run the rail up to the middle of this ramp again. We're going to rinse and repeat this until we've hit the desired height. And there you go, you've finished the corkscrew. So now we've covered how to do the main rail junctions in Satisfactory. In our next video, we will be covering various ways to build your railways for your chosen aesthetics. I will be focusing on all the different styles of railways that I've seen and what I think might appeal to you uh, rather than just going for the free form style. Uh, I'll also be covering tips on how to make things like the railway lights that you can see here in my factory. But that's all we have time for in this one. I hope you found it useful. And don't worry, when signaling comes, we will be covering that here as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, the Calamity and Cerebral Tag as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and James Irwin, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Kareev Johnny. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.